If you're going to build something from nothing, you've got to know what really works. I took a $1,000 loan and built a $5 billion business, and now I make smart investments in new businesses on Shark Tank. This is Barbara Corcoran, and you're listening to Business Unusual. Today on Business Unusual, I'll answer your questions about business, motivation, life, or anything else on your mind. But first, how to build your business by creating great stories. Just because you closed a big deal or opened a brand new office, you think you might get a new story on that? Well, guess what? You won't. It's boring. What you've got to do is create good fairy tales for the press to write about. Great stories that are irresistible. And that was my specialty always in building my business. And that's exactly what I teach my entrepreneurs from Shark Tank to do every day. Inventing good stories is easy if you keep your ears open for little news bits that you can wrap your head around and your arms around and make it part of your story. When co-op boards were banning dogs in some buildings for the first time and also interviewing dogs in other buildings, I invited 100 dogs to Central Park and every news channel out there to come film me teaching dogs how to shake hands and be well-behaved. Ridiculous? Of course. But was it in every newspaper out there? You bet it was, along with my smiling face and my company name. I used to smudge apartments that couldn't be sold. You might ask, what's a smudge? Well, I'll tell you what it was. I invented it. It's an old Indian recipe for chasing away bad spirits in an apartment that were getting in the way of the sale. And so I had an old bookkeeper I know come in and burn incense and ring bells, and the media just ate it up. And what do you think actually happened? The darn apartments actually sold. You go figure that one. When I had an opportunity to pitch on the Guggenheim Mansion, they wanted to give it to the big broker in town. I persuaded them to give it to me because I told them about my story hook, which was that there was an old safe in the basement that had never been opened in a hundred years. And I invited all the press in that we were going to open the Guggenheim safe to see what was in it. What do you think was in it? Nothing. What a great story. They couldn't wait to write about it. One big empty safe. When Stuart Mott, the applesauce heir, was selling his penthouse apartment on the wonderful Galleria on East 57th Street, everyone wanted the listing. The problem with the listing, it had cows grazing on the roof. What a wonderful opportunity for publicity. And we publicized those cows until we got some big old buyer in there to pay the full price. If you want to get publicity for whatever you're trying to sell, think outside the box. Think what's a good story hook that even your kids would love to hear about. Then you're on to something. And you know what happens? The magic of building a business at its best. Your brand goes for a free ride with publicity. And now it's time to answer your questions on Business Unusual. Hi, Barbara. This is Eddie from Whitefish, Montana. I love the podcast. Question. I was wondering, why is a positive attitude in business so crucial? Eddie, that seems to me like a very obvious answer, but let me give you my obvious answer. If you don't have a positive attitude, you don't have the stamina to get through the bad times. Everybody goes out into business filled with positive feelings. It's like a hot date or new romance. But get married to that gal after five years, and what do you really need? You need a positive attitude to get through the Monday nights where you're bickering and quarreling and things are not going well. So when you start your business, think of it as a young romance and ask yourself, when it doesn't shape up to what I want it to be, how am I going to be about staying in love? You need to stay in love through the bad times and keep working like crazy to make sure it all happens. And that's why you need a positive attitude. And that's one over the long haul. Hi, Barbara. This is Marty from Bismarck, North Dakota. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell me what you think makes a business idea great. Marty, the short answer to that is your business idea is great if enough people will buy it and you can produce it at a low enough price so that you make a sizable profit. Anything short of that is simply a good idea. It's not a business idea. So qualify your new business idea with two key questions. Will someone buy it? 
are there enough people that will actually give me money for this idea? And next, ask yourself also whether you'll get a sizable enough profit from each thing you make so that if you're making 10,000 of them, you're going to get very, very rich. Hi, Barbara. This is Jeannie from Carmel, Indiana. What do you look for when you test a product and what's the best way to test it? Jeannie, the best way to test a product is take it outside, meet 10, 12, 15 strangers, show them the product and ask for honest feedback as to what's right and what's wrong about it. Then ask them if they'll give you the money. You'll know right away if your product's ready for market or not. And that's all the questions we have time for today. If you have a question, tweet it at Barbara Corcoran, and I may just answer it on a future episode. You've been listening to Business Unusual with me, Barbara Corcoran. Come back next week to hear more steps and missteps I took on the path to success on Business Unusual. Business Unusual is part of the iHeartRadio Podcast Network. Be sure to follow Business Unusual on iHeartRadio or subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts. Our executive producer is Sandy Smolens for Audiation. Our mixer is Dave Savage. Chris Peterson is Senior Vice President of Podcasts for iHeartRadio.